guys welcome back in the last few lectures i have discussed when to suspect primary immunodeficiency disorders i have discussed the steps of leukocyte adhesion and migration and in the last lecture i discussed about the type 1 leukocyte adhesion deficiency in this lecture i'll be discussing the second type of leukocyte adhesion deficiency that is led type 2 now, LAD type 2 is a rare autosomal recessive disorder. Uh, only around 7 cases have been reported so far. So you can say it's a really rare disorder. And uh, reminding you again, it is an autosomal recessive disorder. It has an autosomal recessive inheritance. It is characterized by recurrent infections, persistent leukocytosis, and severe mental and growth retardation is additional to it, okay? LED2 patients, they exhibit a deficiency in the expression of cell surface fucosylated glycoproteins. The fucosylated glycoproteins include the H antigen on the RBCs and the Cy Lewis X molecule, okay? The epitopes, these epitopes, they are uh, fucosylated glycan structures and these uh, are deficient in LED2. The molecular defect in LED2 has been localized to the pathway that synthesizes GDP glucose. So the GDP glucose pathway, it is deficient because of a defect in the gene SLC35C1. So, SLC35C1 gene defect leads to the uh, defect in the GDP uh, fucose pathway and this leads to the defect in the production of Cy Lewis X and the antigen H on the RBCs. So, again repeating, the molecular defect in uh, LED type 2 is localized to the pathway that synthesizes the GDP fucose from the G uh, GDP mannose. The genetic defect lies in SCL35C1 gene. Exact genetic defect that accounts for the generalized fucosylation defects is yet to be determined. But now SCL35C1 is the main genetic defect that is found. Now the PSGL1 that is the P-selectin gly glycoprotein ligand 1 and its component fucosylated O-linked oligosaccharides is important uh, ligand on the neutrophils to which the, uh, which the neutrophils use to attach to the endothelium. Thus in LED2 there is decrease in the production of PSGL1 due to absence of Cy Lewis X uh, ligands or glycoprotein expression, uh, also called as CD15S. The immunodeficiency in LAD2 is most obvious during the first years of life with recurrent infections in majority of the patients. The infections, however, are less severe and fewer as compared to LAD1. LED2 is characterized by recurrent skin infections, pneumonias, bronchiectasis, tuberculosis, and denture abnormalities. Later in life, the immune defect can become milder, with periodontitis being the main uh, or the major persistent manifestation. It is not clear why the immune system of LED2 patients usually improves after one to two years of life. However, two possible explanations can be given. A. Either the Maturing immune system becomes less dependent on the selectin function as a, comp uh, as a result of compensatory mechanisms or B, the level of fucosylation it increases over time until, so until some selectin function is restored. So two main uh, theories are there. One, the immune system, it, it matures and it becomes less dependent on the selectin function because of the development of other compensatory mechanisms or second, the level of fucosylation it increases over time. That is the GDP glu fucose formation from mannose. It increases over time. So some selectin function is restored. So more and more long-term studies on untreated LED2 patients need to be done to know the exact reason for the improvement of this immune status in LED2 patients. Again, repeating, immune status usually improves in the LED2 patients after one to two years. 
in addition to the immunodeficiency the led2 patients they show strong developmental abnormalities the most severe developmental defects are found in patients uh, include that of psychomotor and mental capabilities the abilities for directional movement to sit to walk are strongly delayed speech development is also delayed okay these defects indicate a strong influence of fucosylation on the brain development so the mental or the psychomotor abilities they are typically affected why because fucosylation typically affects the brain development so a decrease in the fucosylation leads to a decrease in the brain development which leads to microcephaly plus cortical atrophy which leads to severe psychomotor and mental retardation the patient is not able to move towards a particular direction the patient is not able to sit not able to walk and there'll be severe speech development defect okay unlike led1 the patients with led2 do not experience a delayed separation of umbilical cord and delayed separation of umbilical cord is not a complication of led2 individuals with led2 do have additional complications which are not seen in led1 which is a unique type of blood group that is bombay hh type blood phenotype bombay or hh blood phenotype you should know that the bombay blood group is a rare blood group phenotype that is characterized by deficiency of all three that is deficiency of the uh, h antigen a and b all three blood group antigens they are absent in the bombay blood group bombay blood group do not have any antigen okay so led2 patients and bombay blood group they are always seen together they are always seen together bombay blood group and led2 patients are always seen together because both of them are associated with a global defect in the pathway of fucose metabolism so let me make it more clear the o blood group that is normally found it has absence of a and b antigens but has present h antigen this h antigen is formed from gdp fucose but in led2 patients this fucosylation mechanism to form gdp fucose is absent so h antigen will be absent so it will lead to the absence of uh, h a and b all three will be absent so it will lead to the formation of bombay blood group that is the hh phenotype okay so the bombay blood group is always present in the led2 patients because of the common fucose uh, metabolic pathway the led2 may also be known as the congenital disorder of glycosylation this cdg that is the congenital disorder of glycosylation type 2 because of primary defect in the fucose metabolism now let us see a few clinical features of the patient with led2 these include long eyelashes a broad and depressed nasal bridge a simian crease and dorsally positioned second toes the depressed nasal bridge can also be seen in uterine or in intrauterine ultrasonographic investigation as seen here this long and depressed nasal bridge can also be seen intrauterine and uh here it is on the right lower panel it is an ultrasound that is done in the 28th week of gestation so you can see a long and depressed nasal bridge in this baby for those who are not clear about the simian crease the simian crease i have demonstrated here simian crease is an older name that is now commonly called as the single transverse palmar crease Now LED2 is characterized by persistent leukocytosis due to neutrophilia in which the counts can go as high as 40000 per mm3. Now coming to the lab diagnosis of LED2, flow cytometric analysis demonstrates absence of CD15S or the Cy Lewis X expression and it is done by using a monoclonal antibody that is directed against the Cy Lewis X. 
genetic sequencing will reveal defects in SCL35C1 gene. So the main diagnostic uh, test or the standard gold standard test is the flow cytometry in which there is absence of Psi Lewis X expression or absence of CD15S. Next coming to the management. Management again includes aggressive treatment of infections. Remember it as in LED1 in LED2 patients are infected with common uh, pathogenic agents and not with opportunistic ones. So these patients will respond well to aggressive management with antibiotics and we can also consider antibiotic prophylaxis if the infections in these patients they are frequent. Now next coming to the most important step as you all know that leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 is a disorder of fucose metabolism and because of the fucose metabolism defect the carbohydrate based lectin ligands are not formed leading to various uh, defects in the leukocyte adhesion and migration and thus leading to various infections. Now in few case reports it has been said that uh, the leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 can be corrected if we uh, supplement them with oral fucose. So oral supplementation of fucose in the patient, uh, it leads to expression of fucosylated selectin ligands in these patients and therefore uh, after 9 months of treatment these patients uh, they have Im improvement in the infections and the fever it disappeared. So all patients of leukocyte adhesion deficiency they have type 2 they have been recommended for oral fucose supplementation for around 9 to 12 months to this i come to the end of leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 in the next lecture i'll be discussing leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 3 hope you all like the lecture don't forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and want to get regular updates for the newly uploaded videos in medicine, kindly hit the bell icon.